old America, the land of opportunity, where it was born and where it was shot dead and left to bleed out and decompose on the side of the road. This used to be the place to be if you wanted a new start, if you wanted to run away from the life of the old world. Instead, you got exactly what you were running away from and then some. What is this gray nation if not the putrid concentration of all the worst aspects of the decay that had taken over the old world way back when? The old world followed those who sought freedom and wanted to impose its order on this soil as well. Our ancestors replied to that with a revolution. The founding fathers declared independence, but sowed a poisonous seed, one that was full of the very rot that was killing Europe. But while Europeans had something distinctly their own to fall back on in order to fight cultural death, America had nothing. So our ancestors kept running, running away from anything resembling a system and law to the frontiers where a man still had a chance to make something of himself, without a damn big brother watching over the shoulder to nag and impose limitations, where the law was defined not on some paper, but by your own ability to defend what you've carved out for yourself. But soon enough, the poisonous seed spread its roots all across this land, and eventually there were no more places left to hide or run away to. And yet this is exactly what many people still want today. Immortality is in the fountain of youth. Drink from it and go back to your beginning. But where can Americans go? The constant debate on who is or isn't betraying the law of the Founding Fathers, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. It is completely irrelevant because it is the source of our decay. Whatever is good in the Constitution isn't an accomplishment of some dead men, but rather stems from the principles that brought people to the new world in the first place, principles that predate the Founding Fathers. Whatever is purely of the Founding Fathers in the Constitution is the disease that is killing us. This is our world now, our world, and those ancient people are dead. To hell with the past, because the past is what's killing us, strangling us and won't let, it, let us go of our throat until we cut it at the root. Our fountain of youth isn't in adherence to the writings of dead people. It is in those principles that brought our ancestors here in the first place. It is in the life of the frontier, in a political no man's land. It is in the life before and after a civilization, and the desire for that life is engraved deeply in the mind of every true red-blooded American that didn't succumb to being a slave of this system. It is clear as day that what an American wants is to be free to travel from place to place. No laws but his own, true freedom. Bikers are the last cowboys. Pensioners want to travel the country in their RVs. While rednecks, racists, tribalists, and survivalists all try to isolate themselves from mainstream society and create their own social environment in the woods, compounds, and settlements that they create themselves. Our pop culture is riddled with expressions of this desire. Movies, TV series, and games about a zombie apocalypse, a post-apocalyptic future, a collapse of our society are all immensely popular in society and amongst people who wait for the fall of society in particular, as they now cold steel weapons and guns for these scenarios, namely the zombie apocalypse. We want our civilization to fall and crumble around us because we live in a rotting corpse of a prison, and once it falls apart, we'll be able to get a glimpse of the sun. We like to talk about freedom, but in reality, we are all slaves in a multitude of ways. We're not merely slaves to a defunct state through our dedication to dead men's words that most can't be bothered to remember anyways, making it an irrational drive instilled in us through generations. We're not merely slaves to corporations through consumerism. We are foremost slaves to each other. In agreeing to a social contract with the state as the arbiter, we had all willingly given up our freedoms, true freedom. Instead, we have a system of mutual limitations. I limit your freedom and you limit mine. We must accept it at that because that is the law the social contract enforced by the state that holds the monopoly on violence in order to sort us out if we suddenly attempt to practice real freedom. Real freedom allows us to sort each other out, whoever comes out victorious by imposing his will, be it through manipulation, coercion, or force, affirms his freedom. No state, no lawyers, no third parties. You and me, here and now. Naturally, guns become a great tool in the affirmation of one's freedom and the establishment of one's law because his reach is extended as far as the bullet will take it, splattering the brains of whoever dared to challenge you and yours. No, this will not bring about anarchy of everyone against everyone, because nature declared men are not equal. 
Through this constant push and shove of establishing dominance and the freedom that comes with it leads to the formation of gangs, groups, tribes, movements, where every person is put into the exact place where he belongs. The leader, the right-hand man, the warriors, the lookouts, etc. Depending on the nature of the group, want freedom? Bring down corporations to emancipate yourselves from consumerism. Crush the banks to emancipate yourselves from debt. Burn down the nightclubs, gyms, and fast food joints to emancipate yourself from hedonism. Destroy the system to emancipate yourself from everyone else around yourself. Want freedom? End this American way of life. Wipe your ass with the Constitution. This is the call of American futurism. One, we want to bring about the complete and right away destruction of American civilization to blast the, the society free from its own history. Two, we aim to do that by utilizing its own systems, technology, and mechanisms against it. We will jump at the wheel of American civilization and push it into overdrive until it crashes and burns, forcing us into a clean slate. Three, we stand for the true American way of life, where your freedom and happiness are determined by you alone. Four, we will make way for a new American frontier, one that exists around every corner for every American. And just as our Italian futurist predecessors, one, we want to sing the love of danger, the habit of energy and rashness. Two, the essential elements of our poetry will be courage, audacity, and revolt. Three, beauty exists only in struggle. There is no masterpiece that is not an aggressive character. Poetry must be a violent assault on the forces of the unknown to force them to bow before man. Four, we want to glorify war, the only cure for the world. Militarism, patriotism, the destructive gesture of the anarchists, the beautiful ideas which kill and contempt for women. Five, we want to demolish museums and libraries, fight morality, feminism, and all opportunist and utilitarian cowardice. I am American futurism. I am what you fear the most. I am what you need. I am what you made me. I am the American dream. And that concludes the American Futurist Manifesto by Slavros. Um, so I'm here with uh, Arjuna Zoltanis is back and uh, Alcaz. So what do you guys think of the American Futurist Manifesto? Um, I would say that it, it you know, I, I remember reading it back on Iron March back in the day and being really into it. And it, it's good now to kind of have a, you know, to, have, you know to, to read it again four years later and both see like the, the critiques I have of it and the, um, the stuff I really liked about it, I guess, you know, it, it, it was it was good for its time. It was good on Iron March at the time. It was really me and a lot of other people's first introduction to futurism. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I kind of have mixed feelings about it, to be honest. Um, like, it's looking backwards to like the American frontier, and like I get that. Yeah. But like, it's not forward thinking, like futurism proper, like Italian futurism. Um, it's very concerned with like freedom, like it's almost libertarian. It's inspired in some of the concepts. Yeah, it's inspired in some of the concepts of talking about, but overall, it's it's not really compatible. It's just more accelerationism, tear the system down, tear this down. Uh, futurists, uh, their idea is about going forward and putting something new there. Uh, yeah, there's definitely elements there about tearing down the old order, but but they don't have the uh, something that's more in line with the futurist thought of replacing it with. Yeah, there's no like embrace it's of new technology. It's just anarchy, but they're advocating for just like individualist anarchy. Well, not even just pure, well, it, yeah, there is an anarchist element, but what they want to actually do is bring back like this uh, type of like traditionalism in the modern era, which isn't uh, what futurism wanted. Yeah. Um, it's okay, I guess. Uh, it's parts of it I like. Uh, I like how they uh they brought up like a stuff like the banking institutions, which is more relevant to nowadays. I think that was kind of nice. Yeah, like you know, speed and speed and fast cars is really relevant to Marinetti at the time. That's not something that modern future should really be obsessed with. We should be obsessed with tearing down things like the banks. 
and you know the fast food i know i like the part about like destroying consumerism i guess yeah that especially for the u.s i think that's relevant so. yeah cons- consumerism that is entire, really mundane that entire section they're talking about like destroying the the nightclubs the fast food joints that was a pretty good i guess that's pretty yeah, good it's very accelerationist though like it, it, it's, it's just kind of taking the future's aesthetic and putting it onto accelerationism. But I don't know. I, I like well, the manifesto. I'm not going to lie. Well, it's actually uh, it's all right. something that you kind of see on Telegram a lot with the groups like Hate Cult or Pax Ariana and all of them. Who I have like mixed feelings on. Personally, I'm, um, I'm not in those cliques. It's not really what we're trying to do with like futurism forever. Like, I would consider us more descendants of Marinetti than like Slavros or yeah, well, William L. Pierce or the yeah. stuff that's like inspiring American futurism. One of the things I I should say on this is um, well, well, yeah. It, it, you're breaking up, so. Um, I, well, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was going to say that. Uh, like the main problem that I have with it is like they're actually it is just anarchism and they're wanting to use the anarchism to revive like some traditional order. But the other point of it is is they're advocating anarchism not just because they want to tear shit down. It's also because they're advocating for race war and they believe that anarchy is the only way to do that, which is why they support like polarization and acceleration of violence in the first place. Yeah, um, it's very and, informed uh, by future. Yeah, and futurists, like, when they did it, it was more about, like, uh, attacking, like, stagnancy and conservatism in general, which uh, conservatism itself is basically a form of traditionalism. It's just that they're advocating for, like, a status quo that is liberalism, or as Vola wanted to go slightly further back. But even then, I don't think the futurists would actually agree with what Vola wanted. And uh, there is concepts that futurists have that are compatible with traditionalism, like the, the hardcore militarism and the hatred of uh, femininity. But the, these aren't really uh, things that you would say that are actually compatible, like overall, with what they're putting forward. It's more of a redefining of what it is and trying to co-opt it for something that it isn't. Uh, like I, I can think of like futurists themselves that like even though they're like a war, like advocating for like warrior artists, and it's a lot of them themselves were pretty decadent people and not exactly. Uh, what they would call good morality a lot of the a lot of the people in the siege side would call them degenerates or want to kill a lot of futurists Especially well they didn't like care about morality like explicitly yeah the siege the siege people still advocate for a type of morality they just say it doesn't matter at the moment they're they're saying it doesn't matter when it comes to their opposition so they can I'll be right back. a goal but they're still framing it within a moral system because they're advocating for this type of traditionalism, a type of perennialism and adherence to like natural order. I think if a lot of these guys familiarize themselves with like Italian futurism more, they wouldn't necessarily like it. Like a lot of these guys are guided more by like national socialism and like Hitler was very wasn't fond of like modern art or abstract art. He didn't like futurism. He banned it even. Um, so I don't know. It kind of like kind of bothers me when like NS people are co-opting like the futurist name and those ideas personally. Um, when they don't really adhere to what Marinetti was all about. They don't necessarily like modern art. They like aspects of futurism, mostly like the edgier aspects about like flooding the museums and destroying uh, the art galleries and stuff like that. Um, Contempt for women, all that. Like, you know, they like the patriarchy aspects, the patriarchal aspects. But, um, yeah, they wouldn't be down with dudes like Guido Keller, I don't think. Um, Yeah. uh, I I, I also do think it would be interesting, too, is that uh, when it does come to, like, the art, like, we can actually look on here what type of art they usually Post. A lot of the art they do post is like romantic naturalist or uh, Greco Roman art, which uh, the futurists uh, had more overlap with like expressionism, uh, actual futurist art. You had some stuff like Deco, I'm pretty sure some of them liked. And then you also had like brutalism that was inspired by it, which uh, would look more like uh, modern art or uh, what, what you saw in the Soviet Union a bit. That's not really yeah. what they would actually like 
advocate for, but whenever you do see it used, it's usually like in this like autistic editing of like dark wave, if you know what I mean. Like dark wave is like the dark foreigner aesthetic. And that's yeah. really just Fact. like an, an, an edgy, it's just like something that's really edgy. It's not, re it's like an edgy expression against uh, current things, but it's not really trying to mean like a real political symbology that was futurist. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. They're like. Wait, what what I miss? Um, they're the American futurist take on art, like their love for like romanticism and like traditionalist art, um, like Greco-Roman aesthetics. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Um, not the not time mo you see like modern art from them. It's dark wave, which is kind of some of the stuff I've seen you post before, Arjuna. But like uh, yeah, dark wave isn't, isn't. Yeah, it's not futurist. It's just more of an expression of uh, just the edgiest. The, the, the anarchy. That's about it. Exactly. Yeah. Or the I personally, I do like that aesthetic personally, but it's yeah, okay. I wouldn't describe it as futurist. Uh, I kind of stopped using it <clears throat> like long ago. Yeah, you I did that better, James Dean one. But. There's better examples of like uh, uh, futuristic art. Like, I want to consider that dark wave. It's more of it a. It is a dark wave edit, but like. Uh, what have you considered? Yeah, it's a dark wave edit. Like, Jul mm. like Julie's aesthetic is also dark wave, technically, because it, it, a lot of it ah. came out of the influence of like Dark Foreigner, and he briefly associated with them. So, like, people who are making that art that were associated with Julie were making the like versions of dark wave. Which is what it's inspired. Yeah, of. my I do still take from Dark Foreigner somewhat, but um, I wanted to say something, but I had to do something real quick. Um, because you mentioned how like a lot of these siege people would want to like hang the futurists for being like degenerate or whatever. Uh, the futurists didn't really care about morality. Like in the American Futurist Manifesto, it says to fight hedonism, but they the futurists were hedonists. It was just a fight morality. Yeah. Warriors. <laughs> That's the whole uh -huh. reason. But they're, they're hedonists because they're, they're part of the warrior culture. But like, see, see, yeah. when they appeal to like the moral system, it's appealing to like natural order or like a perennial truth. And you don't really have an element of that in futurism at all. Like, it, it's, 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 more, it, it's more of a Darwinian appeal because like, there's literally a quote by Marinetti himself calling himself a Darwin. It, it, it's anti perennial. It's anti yeah. like, old traditionalism. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's looking uh, forward and not looking back for our values. Like, uh, yeah, so I think that fascism talks about this, like, in fascist philosophy, that, like, uh, it, Gentile had an appeal to something absolute, but if you look at Mussolini himself of what he would write his essays, the, the fascist state was there as a consciousness of its own it was god elect a god elect but in the hegelian system there was a religious justification the like mussolini's fascist states as like an absolute concept as god elect didn't have a justification there but force so he called it a fraud a, a, like a myth because it's operating on the notion of force itself and it's it's basically a rejection of like uh, the type of traditional metaphysics that you saw especially with people like Evola, Ginan, uh, Demastre, Haman, they, they were all appealing to like a perennialism or a true, or like an absolute truth that was defining these things in the first place. And a lot of these traditionalists too did not agree with ideas like the totalitarian state, which is fundamentally a modernist concept. I know the futurists, I don't think they agreed with the totalitarian state. Uh, it's kind of hit or miss because a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them were more like, if you look at their systems they were putting forward in the manifesto, it was a bit more libertine, but it was like a, yeah. it was like a militaristic libertine society. But uh, yeah, it, was a, it, it ended it was up a... morphing into actual like fascist philosophy. The fascist philosophy of totalitarianism isn't uh, just like the state itself. It's kind of like what the people are, are also living. Like, yeah, I, I know, I can, I know. I, yeah, like people die for Christ, people shit for Christ, people fast for Christ, people will do that for like a, a type of irrational uh, collectivism and that was a justification for a totalitarian state and like uh, th that's not, it's fundamentally modern because uh, Christians for example would find a lot of problems with that because it's not exactly agreeing with their moral system, their metaphysics, it's, a, it's very corrosive and it can also relate, have a strong relation to Darwinism, which fundamentally is an acid to any type of liberal morality. 
Yeah, yeah a lot exactly. of people a lot of people don't get that fascism is progressive and it is like ultra modern and forward thinking like it isn't traditionalism it isn't social conservatism in decay like that was Ebola's critiques of fascism <laughs> is that it was modern it was social yeah. it was progressive like, that's what Ebola didn't like about it yeah like in say like Britain including like Germany you know, there's differences with that one that they had like feminists in those parties and those movements that were advocating for women's rights worker rights for the women stronger like welfare reforms that you didn't have in that you did not have in traditional societies you had representation for women so they could really talk about stuff for improving uh the like the family unit for women when it came to raising children or even working that's not something you would have in a traditional traditionalist system you had occupational voting uh, that's not something you would have in a traditional system. You'd have like a revival of, uh, of an aristocratic uh, type of government. Like they'd be voting for the aristocrats only, not for like people that are working on occupational levels. That's so uh, fundamentally proletarian. That's not something they would agree with. Actual traditionalists, like uh, say Spengler's problem with Hitler, that he was too proletarian. His movement was too proletarian. Like uh, it's also one of the problems that, like Ebola had of Mussolini, anyways. Is that it was just fundamentally too proletarian. It was populist. Or there's the Russian reactionary that I've posted videos about before. Uh, Rigor. Uh, Ivan. Ivan yeah, Alien. Ivan. I think. Yeah. 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 His main problem with fascism is that it was a uh, godless, demagogic, and it's therefore relativist and it's anti-Western for that reason. Or Salazar, like a pagan state worship. It, it's because it's modern. It does not agree with the tra tra traditionalist metaphysics of like natural order and religious appeal for morality or natural law. Its ideas of natural law and natural order is a fun, is like a different definition that you would find more compatible with like the Darwinian understandings of those terms. Yeah, for sure. We're getting a bit off track. Uh, topic here, so we should well, uh, return. Yeah, well, that's the well, that's the problem with them is that the. When they're talking about American futurism, that they're bringing it back towards that distinction, and they want to relate it into traditionalism. And one, you might cut off. Yeah. Well, one of the big things is about this is that they're trying to. The reason why I'm talking about this is because they're trying to on on Iron March with Slavros to mix Ebola's uh, traditionalism with national socialism and fascism. And they're appealing to like a type of perennialism for these worldviews and basically saying that the difference that philosophical foundations do not matter it's the same thing and they're trying to say that fascism and national socialism is all have always existed because these are things that are found in all traditional societies that can that are all an expression of absolute truth that comes from a creator a dharma a god whatever you want to call it and it's appealing to a moral system that is fundamentally fundamentally traditionalist. It might have an aspect of anarchism there, but it's only because they want to tear it down and have a revolution. It's literally the, I'm a revolutionary because I'm an enemy of the counter-revolution. It's a, a counter-revolutionary enlightenment, to, uh, like an anti-enlightenment reassertion of these traditional values. It's not compatible with futurism. It's not compatible with fascism. It's not compatible with national socialism. They're, they're basically LARPing and they're fake. And anybody who advocates for this type of futurism is not a futurist. And they should literally kill themselves. Amen to that. Well, well said. Well said, brother. <laughs> Finally, someone said it. Like, I don't know. The Iron March yeah. conception of fascism has always, like, bothered it's me. Because, yeah, basically just I subordinates had everything. Like, I had an argument that, that dude in the chat, if you remember. And he's, like, just going in circles trying to, like... Uh, justify the bullshit universal like, truth bro yeah like, yeah the universal truth like that that means anything yeah, whatever uh, that means <laughs> I, I do think that can be philosophically justified but it doesn't really have any relation to futurism sure but the you're gonna need to have you're gonna need to justify it somehow since the statement universal truth is very arbitrary it doesn't mean anything uh, that's a topic for another week, maybe. That's kind of off yeah. topic. Yeah, exactly. So maybe one day we could go into the whole Iron Mark ship, but now we're just sticking with their conception of futurism. I, I would say this is the Iron March episode. Like, you know, we're, we're just like, with this podcast, I want to draw the line in the sand, make it clear that, like, we're not American, <laughs> Iron March American futurists. Like, 
I, I think I can sum it up. Like the whole point is, is we're not traditionalists. We're not like right wingers or or any of that sort. You know, we're I guess we're we're futurists. We're looking towards the future, and not the past. Yeah. We're, yeah. Exactly. We're. If we're that the means running of... down those hacking shred architecture, so be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... Uh, <laughs> maybe not burning it down, but making new stuff. I guess. These yeah, people have uh, uh, agreement with thinkers like Roger Scruton, who died justly so. Yeah. Wait, what? Did, what? Roger Scruton was a uh, British conservative who was very big on like Platonic understandings of like beauty and like a, a traditional art being a like an absolute concept, and that the, all forms of modern art are basically a mocking of modern uh, of society and modern people, and are nihilistic and therefore bad. When it's not that the fundamental expression of futurism was the warrior idea in progressing forward through violence and, and war. Yeah, because when you're expressing, trying to express like a very violent archetype, I mean, violence isn't ordered, it's chaotic. So obviously, if you're going to try to portray that for artwork, it needs to be very chaotic and expressionalist. You have like the romanticist depictions of war, but they're not really realistic, and doesn't it doesn't really get the heart of the war out of there. But more abstract representations can show like the feeling of being in war more accurately, since it's pure chaos, which what modern war especially felt like with the Great War. So it just goes back to a different framework, I guess. Well, like. We could look at examples of like war, like portrayed in naturalist art. You have a lot of uh, art pieces like that from the war on the Eastern Front, and they're frankly like even though I like naturalist and I like romantic style art, it's actually kind of boring or bland looking. Yeah, I don't really like it. Yeah. These Iron March guys, though, like post Iron March, like Iron March is over, um, but. A lot of people have been attracted to like our Telegram channel. Like I post modern architecture. I also post not just futurist art, but like surrealism and Dadaism. Surrealism you, is great. Yeah, you see them in the comments complaining about this shit though. And it's like, why the fuck are you even following like a futurist it's channel? It's literally and, like, commie aesthetic. It's literally communism, bro. Like, I um, really like the communist aesthetic, if I'm going to be honest. Me neither, honestly. Yeah, the, well, the communist aesthetic is socialist realism and it has a uh, lot more i'm talking about the architectural aesthetic uh, well yeah like the actual art painting style is more similar to like naturalist i don't art. like socialist realism but i i i really don't like it. it's just about, not like, inspired their, in my opinion well if we're talking about like their <clears throat> architecture system like i would say it's the same it changed yeah well like some of it has similarities with like brutalism but the vast majority of it is uh it's not brutalist well no some of it some of it does but the vast some of it is outwardly brutalist but there's yeah. a there's a specific style i think it's called like soviet uh constructionalism i think well, is the name well american it. architecture like if we're talking about like in cities has more uh, similarities with like the soviet uh architecture system that's because one of the guys was behind the soviets uh, like architecture style is also a big uh, he, he ended up coming to america and he was employed for a lot of the uh, yeah like uh process. in the area i live around like you see those like really tall apartment blocks which are like in the circles that was like a soviet style yeah like you see I, those, all there's a, all right around there. my area like every day when i walk home from school i could turn back and i just see like these massive apartments just lined up i yeah. like it though if i'm gonna be honest i think it looks cool like there's some things like in modern art style that i that, that i do like but like a lot of modern modern art when it comes to like architecture, I'm not a not a fan of. Like I'm more like if we're doing modern art, I would rather see like more brutalism or some of the futurist art pieces brought to life. Yeah, like I love brutalism for architecture. Um, <laughs> the futurists had interesting <laughs> plans for architecture too, but that a lot of those weren't realized. Unfortunately, um, what's his name? Um, let me look it up quick. Um. Yeah, everyone has their own taste in art, I guess. I, I'm not yeah. really a big fan of brutalism, honestly. I think it's very soulless. <laughs> okay, Arjuna. I love brutalism. Look at eco-brutalism. 
Ikebrutism is pretty cool. Yeah, Antonio Santalia was like the uh, Santalia was the uh, main futurist architecture, and he drew a lot of like designs of um, buildings he planned or hoped to make, but they were never constructed. They were never realized. Um, they're still really impressive, though. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, Google some Antonio St. Elia. Check it out yeah, for some yourself. Some of those uh, buildings that he actually designed look very similar to... to well, what was that, like, old, like, cartoon show where it was, like, that fam like the nuclear family living, like, in a very futuristic world? The, <laughs> the, the Jetsons? Yeah, the Jets. Yeah, it kind of reminds <laughs> me of the Jets a bit. <laughs> some of the architecture. <laughs> Oh yeah, some of the Soviet architecture is like that, like those like disc, uh, those disc oh. buildings, like the Communist Party uh, headquarters in Bulgaria, right? Yeah, I, I can't really see the appeal, honestly. I like it. Problem is, you just need to maintain it, or else it's gonna look like shit within a few well, decades. Like, well, like if we're talking like futurist art style, like something from futurist, like similar to futurist art style that isn't. Uh, that isn't like Soviet. It's more. It's a bit more fiction. Would actually be like the the Star Wars Galactic Empire art style. It's very totalitarian. It's very. Uh, it feels very uh, orderly and very dark, which is something that I actually like. <laughs> yeah, I, I like brutalism because it's menacing and dystopian and well, ag aggressive and intimidating. Um, I like it. Well, one of the cool things <laughs> about like the Galactic Empire too from Star Wars is that the whole point of the technological futuristic and modernist art style in there is because uh palpatine in the show actually hates and had contempt for traditionalist architecture i mean everything in its in time and place no like in the in the like in the series like he literally hated traditionalist architecture because it was an, an expression of uh he considered it to be disorderly because it did not function sameness. It did not show uh, militarization, or and it wasn't an expression of the of darkness. It was more of an expression of uh, uh, of, of like appeals to like a universal morality. And uh, like if you like actually go into Star Wars, which I'm probably sounding like a nerd right now, like the Sith, the Sith uh, like philosophy is effectively like a type of egoism and it it's all Nietzschean, about, I know. It's all about militar militarism and force and struggle. Not just that, also passion. So Yeah. Passion. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just did a replaying of the old Republic, so I, I had to listen through stupid Sith code shit, so I know what you mean. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh yeah, base starting with the Sith every time. Fuck the Jedi. <laughs> Jedi Looks, off, you probably sound target. like huge artists right now. Yeah, nah, I remember man. when Richard Spencer shared that uh, book on the rule of two on the Sith and told people to actually read it. It's something we can learn from. <laughs> <That's pretty funny. laughs> the, okay. <laughs> Wait, what? The, the rule yeah, of two is fucking... Yeah, he shared it on Twitter one time saying the alt-right can learn a lot from the Star Wars Sith. <laughs> Bam. Based. The Sith are epic. We should model our it, fashion. It, it kind of pissed them. off a lot of the libtard Star Wars fans. Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't like Spencer very much, but uh, he, he makes some very funny tweets. <laughs> and to get back on chat. Western okay, that was retarded. Wait, what do you say? He said homosexuality is the last stand of implicit white identity. <laughs> He said that yeah. years ago, like yeah, five did. years ago. It was actually that was an accidental, was an accidental was tweet, but it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, there was been standing next to like uh, four like Japanese traps cross dressers. Oh god. <laughs> right, I I've seen that picture before. <laughs> Amazing. It's like that Pol that Polish dude holding yeah. like a, a tram. Oh yeah, that person. like Polish like a libertarian dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen He's that. also a monarchist, too, even more of a meme. I, I know. Uh, okay, off topic discussion over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's get back so, where were we again? Oh, talking about oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about architecture, right? 
Yeah, we have really veered off topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, well, I, I do know like some of the guys from the am, am futurist like type stuff. Like they like some of the Third Reich like architecture that I've shown before, and like a lot of the Third Reich architecture is Greco-Roman, but they do have some stuff that looks like futurist art, which is what they were. It's like Greco-Roman were... mixed with like aspects of modernism. Yeah, it's yeah. classicist. Yeah, I was posting one of them, and like they were posting it, but like. Uh, that, that in itself, like, if we're talking about, like, that art concept, the person who made that architecture, I don't even remember his name, but I do know, like, the, they had, like, one NS futurist who was, like, a painter and an architect, and he ended up getting put in a concentration camp because his art was perceived as anti-German around 1944. Oof. Damn. Interesting. I don't I, I'm against censoring art. I don't agree with Hitler's takes on art at all. Um, uh, you should bring up Marinetti's response to Hitler, actually. Okay, I can read that quick. Um, just let me pull it up. Um, Wait, what's the response to Hitler? I wonder what, how they feel about Marinetti being bisexual yeah. and walking around with shoes and dicks on them. And, uh, Marinetti, <laughs> I don't think Marinetti was actually bisexual. We don't tell it was, though. No, I don't like, think he right. was. Yeah, there's well, a lot let of people who say that he was. Let me read the quote. I don't think quick. he was. I, I think up. that. He I think wasn't that opposed to homosexuality, though. All right, um, um, he had. He did have anti-homosexual writings. It's mainly against pederasty. Oh, we could have that discussion another time, I guess. All right, Marinetti's response to Hitler. I think that for some time now, Hitler has lapsed into a bias towards static, analytic, realistic, and photographic art leading him to condemn the entire artistic evolution that runs from post-impressionism to plastic dynamism, evolution which has been continually conquering an ever greater plastic synthetic transfiguration movement, geometrical splendor, polychromy, abstraction, and simultaneity. I posted that to the Telegram channel uh, last night. Um, yeah, I saw that. He has a couple other points, too. Um, it's in the Futurist Anthology. It's really short, like I'd recommend reading it. It's only like half a page, but right. um, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Like National Socialists did ban futurism. Futurism is not like compatible with Hitler's view on art or aesthetics. It was not his preferred um, style by well, any he stretch. He liked people like a Wagner, so. Yeah, he was all about Wagner. Like and um, romanticism. Well, yeah, like, I saw you a documentary yeah. on that before, like on his art. Like, architecture uh, of Doom. Yeah, not the architecture of Doom. And like, even though it's made by a Jew, which is kind of lame, like it, it's idea of their art and what it's talking about, what type of art they like is true. A lot of them were artists, uh, writers, novelists, uh, painters. A lot of people in the party hierarchy were. And they were basically rejected by a lot of these like uh, academic positions, not because their art was bad. It was mainly because their art wasn't modern. If you look at a lot of the people at the art academy that actually made art where Hitler went to, a lot of them were making expressionist or deco or what would be known as modern art. And that probably caused like a lapse into hatred of modern art partly. And the other factor I can say is that like unlike in Italy, the Futurists, for example, were nationalistic. They were pro Italian uh, people. Whereas, like, a lot of the artists in Germany uh, that did that type of art style weren't necessarily like German nationalists. A lot of them are liberals or communists, which probably led to like a further hatred of modern artists. I think it's more of a misconception on Hitler's part there, and it probably caused like a misplaced hatred of the actual artistic movement. And I think a lot of uh, American futurists don't really realize that he, he would literally disagree with what a lot of the aesthetic that they're putting forward like dark wave which kind of looks similar to like a modern or a futuristic art style yeah he wouldn't have dug it yeah it's more uh it's more like that futuristic retro style a lot of the times mm -hmm. so i don't really think they would like it but yeah, um, so what else can we address? Because we, uh, we actually addressed quite a bit, so what else did we miss? Uh, let's go back to the text. Um, what do you think about their points? Um, 
We want to bring about the complete and right away destruction of American civilization to blast the society free from its own history. I don't disagree. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't disagree with it, but their hatred of like the American society is the fact that it was predicated on liberalism. And sure, the futurists did not like liberalism, but we have to look at what they're trying to replace it with. Uh, they see fascism or national socialism as a means to return to some traditionalist colonial worldview, which is what they're trying to do when mixing it in with Ebola. It's the end conclusion that it's going to reach. And that's not necessarily compatible with futurism. There's aspects that are, but overall, it's more of a rejection. Yeah, um, yeah so they to... may want to like do the same thing we want to do, but our goal is different. Yeah, well, yeah. for me, like I just... Like for me, like as an end goal, I just want to see a space that can address everything that it ever runs into as a problem without the, without like actually collapsing and having stability and having the people functioning as like one organism as one militaristic whole. Uh, them, like I feel like they're advocating more for like an actual like aristocracy is what ends up being created through like the racial system. Racial. They just want to return to like a. a, a like kind of feudal order where they're with the aristocracy and masses really. It's yeah, ironic actually, because actually, Slavos is not appeal. white. I want to make an appeal here actually. Uh, so if, like if you guys actually like this, uh, what you should do is you should go to a, like a retard called Otto Strasser and another retard brainlet from Austria called Doltus. Read them and you're going to find more agreement with them with your worldview than you are with like Italian fascism. Because distributism is neo-feudalism. They venerated the same type of art that you guys like, and they also functioned on these ideas of like absolute morality and perennial and truth and all that. That's probably more in lines for like the Iron March people than like actual like uh, fascism or futurism. No, I, I would say it's ironic, the whole racial thing, because a lot of us is not white. <laughs> like, yeah. He's a fucking Uzbek. I don't know. All right, the second point, we aim to do that by utilizing its own systems, technology, and mechanisms against it. We will jump at the wheel of American civilization and push it into overdrive until it crashes and burns, forcing us into a clean slate. So that's kind of like what they call accelerationism. Yeah. 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 Like sure, the futurists, like, yeah, the futurists wanted to do the same thing, which is why futurists do get associated with accelerationism a lot. But, yeah, but, but part of their idea was progressing the society forward and getting rid of traditionalism. These guys just want to get rid of liberalism and just put uh, traditionalism. They want to return to like yeah, as return we return to wanna, tradition. They want to revert to a, to a previous social order. Which is yeah, we, want new, we, we want a new social order that has never been seen before. Yeah, new values, new principles, new aesthetics. Agreed. Uh, so, point three, we stand for the true American way of life where your freedom and happiness are determined by you alone. So that's very like individualist, liber like libertarian that's, 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 even. That's, 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 that's a lot of futurism because it's very yeah. egoist. Yeah, it is. It is. I have an um, issue with that one. Like, I, I agree with this. Yeah. The fourth one just appeals to like a new American frontier. I will, I actually, uh, their idea of like the American freaking being like that is like the frontier spirit. It's not necessarily because it's like egoist. Like the American frontier spirit is somewhat individualistic, but the, the premise of it was is that it wanted to create like localism and escape from like big brother government and have like these small societies that are very dependent on each other because they would encourage uh, cultural and social traditions. So to be communalist. What, yeah, it's very communalist, which, uh, I don't like. There is like some elements of the communalism and futurism with its advocates, like syndicates. It's more but, egoist, I'd but, say. Yeah, it's more egotistic. Like, and it's not. And like, it's not encouraging these types of things. Like, I'd say it's like even more like anarchist, like individual anarchist mm -hmm. at times. Because, like, rather than the communalism. Because localism is fundamentally like a uh, tra traditionalist aspect. You know, you see a lot of like American conservatives represented, and American conservatism is liberalism. Like, if you go through, like, actual traditionalist writings, like uh, Demastre or uh, Ebola, they advocated localism because it was the best way to maintain these type of caste systems and also the best way to maintain culture and tradition, which is part of the reason why Ebola rejected the totalitarian state, because it was fundamentally anti-localism. And, um, 
Unitarian. Another Unitarian. thing I should bring up is I was talking to my like uh my friend about the Iron Guard and like they're like one of those like Orthodox traditionalists who are associated with fascism and they were actually they were very backwards um like uh, social and economic like they weren't even pushing for industrialization in Romania. In fact, I think they even wanted to deindustrialize in some cases and they opposed like the centralized state and wanted like. They're also localists, too, since they thought it was the best way of ensuring the unity of the church and state. So they are very backwards, much like uh, like uh, Evola and these other traditionalists. Yeah, well, I do know Sima, which was Kadrianu's, like, co-leader. Like, uh, yeah, no, after Kodranu, it, like, changed. The under Kodranu, under his vision of the party, it was very backwards in that regard. Yeah, it supported like a like a type of distributism, which which did put it aligned with like classical conservatism. But what made it different was their advocate advocation of like biological racialism, which was a component there. But their anti-Semitism was purely religious. But yeah, uh, if we're talking about Sema, Sema when he took over, it was basically just copy and paste uh, religious national socialism at that point. That's part of the reason why like a lot of the we are original fascists. We don't like Nazis. Try people try to basically say Sima was the bad guy and Kadriano was the good guy. Even though if we want to follow their worldview, they'd have to hate Kadriano too because of my racism. Yeah. Even though, like, yeah, I mean, Kadriano wouldn't even be a fascist, I'd say. He's just a um, very hardline traditionalist. I don't know. I would say Kadriano is a fascist. I would disagree on that. No, definitely not. Like, he later on in his life he completely disowned fascism. He, Wait, Kodranu? Kodranu, yeah. What the fuck? Uh He disowned it later on in his life. No, he was not a fascist. He died. Like, what are you what are you talking about? Yeah, I know he died, but he wasn't a fascist. I wouldn't Pers- describe him as a fascist. I'm pretty sure he, was, he wasn't. He if doesn't he have that fascism. He called it like because at first he thought that it was going to be like a way for the for the church and clergy to like maintain its hold for a time society. But he changed his opinion later on that I know. And um, a lot of his policies, like they weren't even fascist. Like his party, like they didn't even want to industrialize. They were agrarian as fuck. Yeah, they weren't yeah, like uh, modernist like the fascists. They were. weren't a modernist at all. See, but Nazi, every the fascist Nazis movement, were actually more modernist. <laughs> every fascist uh-huh. movement is going to be organic to its country, and Romania at the time had a large peasant base, so of course fascist. fascism, fascism in Romania. It's a progressive, I mean, it's, it's the were, case well, in Italy, well, too. So, it, like, in Italy, Italy was still, even though they had some mild industrialization, it was also They were still, large. like, very agrarian. Yeah, it was still very agrarian, so, like, fascism itself, like, in Italy, it was served as an industrializing force. Even in Germany under Hitler, it was, a, like, National Socialism was an industrializing force. Like, the Iron Guard weren't pushing for this, neither was Dolphus. Uh, Salazar pushed for that, but it, that, that, I think it's because he was trying to maintain self-sufficiency. But yeah, like he had. Yeah, orthodox- I would not describe the Iron Guard as fascist or quid. Yeah, he had an Orthodox Christianity I, I, as I like a central was- tenant of what the Iron Guard was, and that yeah. did not like, exist. Remember, they're Italian also fascism. monarchist at first, even though they did switch this later on. They were yeah. monarchist at first. Well, like I, I do think you can call them like third position because there is an ant- emphasis on they were third position. Pos- yes, they yeah. were third yeah, position. Sure. That, that doesn't mean fascism, though. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean fascism. Like, uh, a lot of, like, Gaddafi and, like, Saddam or, like, the Syrian Social Party, they're third position, but I wouldn't call them fascists either. Like, they have a different justification no, there. Uh, like, he, called himself a fascist, dude. He called himself I know a fascist, but he disowned the label later on in his life. He okay, completely well, disowned the label. They he, also, like, in like, uh, For My Legionaries by Kerry Bolton, like, they have a, a section in there where he's talking about, like, Hitlerism and National Socialism. He, he, um, like, he originally called his party National Socialist, but then dropped the party name because he learned of the National Socialist in Germany. Yeah, he didn't want to be associated with the Hitlerites. And, but wait, he, did make, he did make an assertion that Hitler was right to target Jews, but he okay. basically made the assertion that we're a different movement, a different ideology, a different philosophy. I thought Kojiara was a lot more pro-Hitler than the rest of the party. No, no Sima no, was the no. most pro-Hitler. Okay, yeah, yeah, Sima then. Okay. Yeah, Sima's the guy who took over Sima. after Kadrianu died, but Sima wanted to basically go around and like attack everybody that, that was responsible for getting Kadrianu killed. 
it led to so much disorder that they had to put uh, Antonescu in charge. And okay. Cotter, and SEMA just basically functioned as like a paramilitary guy going around attacking people that the government didn't like. Like, I'm pretty sure during that time period, like, uh, since the monarchy was persecuting the Iron God, they uh, switched their position from wanting a monarchy to just being anti-monarchist. They had a purge in the in the party of all monarchists after that happened. It was pretty chaotic for the Iron Guard. But yeah, that, they're definitely one party I would not describe as fascist. They were way too... They were, like, just hardline traditionalists, really. And, like, they took the doctrine seriously. They took it hardline. They listened to what the church fathers said to the to the teeth. They listened to what the, to what, to what the priests said to the teeth. Like, they were very radical about their orthodoxy. Yeah, when I use the term fascism, I'm referring to the Italians specifically. I use third position as, like, the umbrella term. You know, that... Quadrado was definitely third position, but he wasn't a yeah, fascist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um Iron March didn't do that. Like they used fascism as an umbrella term that encapsulates all there these. It reminds me of that one image where it's like a meet your heroes, and it's like a bunch of like images, of like just like photos of these different. You had like you had like a you had Caldrano on there, you had Daddy Vera, you had Hitler, you had Mussolini, you had Mary. You know that image I'm yeah, you know that image, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah like they put people as like they're like upholding one truth, but they all they would all hate each other in real life. They did. They had that international fascist conference, and people didn't agree on anything. Neither Mussolini or Hitler attended. The people who yeah. did attend like, didn't get along with each other. Like everyone on that list despise each other. <laughs> like even. <laughs> Even the Falange, like, even when they were uh, for a secular state, a lot of the philosophy was rooted in cap Catholicism, and that was part of the reason why, like, Antonio, uh, Jose Antonio said that the Falange were not fascists, they were their own thing. Why did he say that? Uh, he, he says it in the Fascist International. I can also point to, like, his uh, biography and selected writings and anthrology, which is all, like, in one book I got from, like, some and, uh... fascist party. He even though he section, said, even he though he section, said that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, he has a section in the in there calling the Italian corporate state windbagger, and it's not a real corporate state because they still have a middle class in existence. <laughs> that would just make him more fascist, right? He, I've read well, that no, book. No, he, he like they supported they supported worker ownership as the as the end, and but the. He, he, he was justifying it through, like, Catholic social teaching, which, like, the fascists sure were influenced by Catholic social teaching or corporatism. But corporatism, like, for the, uh, like, Mussolini, it, it was more of an outgrowth of, like, Hegel's, like, corporation as a state organ body. And it's not necessarily a religious justification for the corporate state. Like, uh, for, the Ger for the Germans, like, with Hitler, the justification for the corporate state was... Uh, like a type of biological essentialism, and environmentalism, agrarianism, and Darwinism to justify it as like a singular whole, which is different than the than the philosophical Hegelian versus like the Catholic justification. These are all different arguments for a corporate state. Third position, but they're all different. They don't like each other. Like also, they the only reason why they work together is because they had the same political enemies and they all got drawn into a war with each other. If they weren't at war with these uh, other positions, they'd probably be fighting each other or having diplomatic crises. I mean, like, Mussolini's Italy, like, they were the one that first to recognize the Soviet Union, so they were pretty close with the USSR from that, and uh, they actually were more aligned with Austria than Germany, and we're going Boy. to protect them with the Anschluss. Germany and the Soviet Union had tons of treaties. Even though, I know, even this was, this was during dead. the Weimar Republic, not in the German... Yeah, but Weimar, like, Weimar, I, I, Weimar I, I, Republic I had treaties with the Soviet yeah, Russia, too. I know they the party, like, the only people who wanted to ally the Soviet Union were Ribbentrop and a guy called Schuldenberg, but uh, those were, like, the main two who were like for the idea of allying with the Soviet Union. And uh, for like on back on Daddy Veda, Kodranu criticized his party for focusing for focusing too much on the state, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think it was like it was that long quote where he was talking about Daddy Veda, Mussolini and Hitler. And he criticized Mussolini and Daddy Veda for focusing too much on the state. So you, they they still had the critiques of each other. Yeah, like these people were, they would, well, yeah. like they did Goebbels, not like each other. Like Goebbels, uh, thing that's in the Didn't he literally call fascism modernist, Goebbels? No, like, so like he said it was modernist, but 
like he also referred to national socialism as a modern movement but like his main his main complaint like in his diaries is that fascism didn't have a real worldview it didn't have a real philosophy because the philosophy and worldview were constructed after it came into power and thus it was illegitimate because it was created uh, to justify what that what they had done as a revolution not necessarily as to why the revolution would happen and that it also lacked a racial racial consciousness which is the fundamental movement of all of history and because uh, it lacked that racial component that was therefore flawed as flawed as marxism is flawed oh uh, wh which part of this diary is it from uh, it's in my uh, Google document that you helped co-write, by the way. Oh, I didn't know it was there. I'll check it oh, later. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, uh, wait no, it wasn't. Like, uh, it was on our Discord conversation on my old account. Wait, on your most recent one? Yeah, the one that got nuked. It should be in there. If not, it's the one prior. I'm pretty sure if you go through the diary, you can find it, though. All right, one minute. Hmm. <clears throat> I, I know one thing that uh, fucking Cogiano and Primo de Rivera call themselves fascists multiple times in their writings, or just what I've read. Yeah, like, uh, and they stopped are, this. Salazar liked Mussolini, then started to hate Mussolini after. So it's not a constant. Yeah, but Salazar yeah. didn't call himself a fascist, nor did well, he, he ever try to achieve fascism. Estado, yeah, he called the Estado Novo National Syndicalist, which is just an alternative name for fascism. But I still uh, think, like, the, the Catholic, I think, like, what happened is a lot of these traditionalists or Catholics and monarchists associated with fascism and national socialism, and then once they're like, oh, shit, this is different, they just distance themselves and rebrand, which I think is the correct thing to do, because we're not the same movement, we're not the same worldview. Like, that was, like, one of the things I did in my video where I was ranting about it, is that I'm not trying to act as a gatekeeper, it's just they, they fundamentally function on a different premise and philosophy and a foundation. They sure they have similarities, but they're fundamentally different, and that's why they focus so much on attacking fascism and national socialism. Like, sure, there's differences between the Italian and the German system, but there's more there's more in common with those two than there is with the, the fucking Catholics or the Orthodox or traditionalist free part. And yeah, I, I would like to say like you can't have a functional movement if you have people going in a million and one different directions. Like, you need ideological purity. And, you know, everybody heading in the same direction, yeah, wanting yeah. to accomplish the same goals. Like, it just creates dysfunction. Yeah, yeah within your own country, you do. Retards. Uh, that's a pretty good joke right there. Read zero tolerance. <laughs> yeah. yeah read... <laughs> the universal truth, bro. Like, you don't get it. I remember some dude was telling me that, like, I asked him, well, what is na what is nature to you? What's natural to you? Just tell me, you just don't get it, do you? And that was his exact words, uh, I kid yeah. you not. Okay, let's have this discussion another time. We're getting more arguments. We're kind of getting off topic. Um, we've been going for about an hour now. Um, does anyone have any, like, final thoughts on... Uh, uh, um, we could do, like, an entire episode dedicated to Iron yeah, Mark so if you want. So if you believe in American futurism and siege, uh, so don't forget to buy your high feet, high thighs for your training lifestyle. And take <laughs> On that note, yeah, we drew the line in the sand. That's what I hope to accomplish. We're not American futurism. We're futurism forever. Yeah, American futurism is about spamming black gay porn like the bullshit girl on Telegram. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, these are not good people. Um <laughs> I don't consider them ideological kin to me. They're coming from a different place and they're trying to accomplish different things. Futurism Forever are the only authentic futurist group on Telegram, on Twitter. Um, we're descendants of Marinetti. These other guys are descendants of William L. Pierce or something. That's not what we're doing. Um, just to like no hard feelings, you know, but... We're just trying to do something different from what those guys are doing. We don't want to be associated with them. We don't want to get lumped in with them. Um, yeah, I, I've said my piece. Um, anyone have anything they want to add? Not really. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. they're, yeah, they're yeah I, I know. I, I, I'll just say this. like, no, sh We're not trying to start any fights with anybody, but we're just trying to lay a oh, line of like, what we fight. believe. Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, man.
I, 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 mean, I don't know. I've been, I don't, stealing, I, I, I've been stealing stuff out of the channel anyway. Yeah, I, I, I guess. So. Yeah, I they, they've been ganking our shit. Like, I'm not going to mention any names, but yeah, they're pulling things from our channel, not giving us credit. Um, it is pissing me off. Like, stay in your own fucking lane. Like, post your gay ass traditionalist art or what have you. You don't get futurism. You misrepresent our ideology. We take this shit seriously. Like, we're thoroughbred. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't get. I want to be able to do cocaine and take weed in public and walk around naked as to beat communists with a baseball bat. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Base. <laughs> we're social libertines. We're not trad fags. Don't step uh, yeah. on our toes. Stay in your own sandbox, motherfucker. <laughs> Next time we fire shots, like we're not gonna, we will mention names and uh, yeah, don't fuck yeah. with us. Somebody anyway, all over again. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, salute, be speedy, all that good stuff. Um, live dangerously.